are you new to publishing in academia? Which journals are worth publishing in and which ones you should be just running from at high speed? Well, today I'm going to share with you a vulnerable story. It's a true story of my failure to recognize a predatory journal. Sounds fun, right? Let's get into it. It's okay. I've learned a couple of things along the way. Some journals make you pay a crazy amount of money to publish in them. And that does not necessarily mean that they are a predatory journal. Although most predatory journals are journals in which you will have to pay. There's thousands of them out there. People have estimated around 15,000 predatory journals today in 2023 possibly even more. So there's a few there and they are doing their best to get you to put your good scientific name to their journal to give them credibility and also they want to take your money. So <laughs> the problem is that also um, great journals like um, Nature and Science also charge you a crazy amount of money to publish in their journal. So that's not... Um, the only thing you should be paying attention to when you're figuring out where do I publish my, where do I send my incredible little gold nugget that represents way too much time. You look out for phishing emails. Editors of great journals don't tend to email you asking you to submit a journal article. It's rare. One I received last month, high quality scientific journal. Having noticed that your published article, and then it, it actually inserts, you know, insert here, the name of a genuine piece of um, writing that I have recently published, which is a very short commentary paper. It's not a research paper, so it's teeny tiny and it's not like a big solid wow the world kind of piece of paper. Elemental Productions, blah, blah, has got, caught great attention, they say. Your submissions on unpublished research manuscripts on hot topics in your specialised or interested scientific area are welcome. And then they provide a bunch of names of the editorial board to, um, to make sure that you know that they're a legitimate, great journal. Now, there's a couple of things that stand out there to me. One is that they want to invite me to the editorial board. That's nice. Thanks. Another one is they want me to submit a paper. That's nice. Thanks. Um, they've recognized that I've published something that is a really teeny tiny, pretty much nothing. And the prowess of that is the basis for which I'm receiving this email. So a bit of warning sign there for me. Uh, they don't mention anything about having to pay for the privilege of publishing with them. And almost never do I see that actually in writing on the front page. They don't tell you until they've, you know, hooked you. Once you're hooked, then they give you that big $3,000. So if I'm getting an invitation to submit a manuscript, hmm, I tend to watch out. Unless I know the editor or I've published with that journal before and I recognize that journal and the specs for it, then I'm like, oh, okay, it's legitimate. Nice one. Yay. And then I do the happy dance. Another way that I can figure out if this journal is legit, or whether it's a predatory journal, is I go and check out Scopus or reputable databases and just check out if I can find it on the usual databases. Because if the databases are paying for the privilege of having that journal, then they're recognizing it as a journal that might be worth its um, weight, possibly even in gold. I had a paper, and I just want to acknowledge that I'm not the only person who I took down in this sinking ship and my sincere and enduring apologies. Go to my co-authors, Carmen, Simone, Jenny. Yeah, still sore about this and still real sorry. Well, what happened was I got an invitation from Internal Medicine Review. And I thought, sounds legitimate. Went and checked out their website. Looked legitimate. Asked them if there was a fee. They said no. And I thought, okay, great. Uh, I tried to look at 
other papers that were published with that journal and they were behind a paywall. Uh, so I thought, okay, well that happens sometimes, might still be legitimate. And I was getting multiple emails from this editor. We had written what I still believe is a fantastic paper. And we put it in with this journal. They then said, congratulations, it's been accepted and it'll be $3,000 to publish it with us. And I said, hang on a minute, you invited me. So you're recognizing the genius here. You should be paying me to publish this, not the other way around. And they said, no, sorry, that's not the way it goes. And I said, well, I'm not interested then. And they said, oh, all right, I tell you what, because, um, because of your prowess, uh, on this occasion only, we're willing to do it for a really good price. And then they dropped it like 90% of the price. And I still said to them, only if, and like they literally dropped it to $300. And I said, only if that means it will be open access. And they're like, whoa, you're really hurting me here. In any case, we published with them open access for $300, this paper. When it was published, that's when the cracks started to really show. And I'll show you what I saw. How is it on a publication that you can end up having the text literally go off the bottom of the page and be cut in half like that? That ain't right. Also, of course I provided them with a high res picture which demonstrated the simulation which was really super cool because you can see here there's a little um, knife in the abdomen of the patient which is a simulated mannequin patient who needs urgent surgery and care. So it's pretty high fidelity, it's high stakes, it's good fun. I mean this is a really cool paper and of course I want it to shine so I'm going to send in a high res photo but instead it comes out looking like this and even when I zoom in on it it looks blurry and just really tragic. Really, really tragic. So it's sad. It made me feel really sad about it. I said to them, ah, oh, can you fix that? And they said, sorry, we've just had a change of editor and the new person hasn't picked up the ropes yet and we don't know quite um, how to make the changes. So we'll put that on our radar for our to-do list for maybe later, as in next life later. About a month later, I got an email from a complete stranger, a scientist somewhere in the world, who said, hey, I saw your paper. Um, I thought this was a predatory journal, but then I saw your name associated with it. So I looked into it, looked at your paper. Um, it looks like a good paper. Uh, can I just check with you? Because they've invited me to publish with them. Can I just check with you? Is this a decent journal? And hand on my heart, I had to say to this person, nah, doesn't look like it. My experience has been rubbish. Um, this paper is not turning up in the usual search engine places and it looks dodgy because it's blurry and the letters are half missing. So yeah, not great. So that's my experience. I'm still sorry. I'm still burned. I don't want to ever have that experience again. So moving forward, I'm only going to be putting papers into journals that I am sure are legit and that my university tend to have a list of safe journals or preferred journals to publish with. I'll be going with them. Also, they use terms like Q1 or top international peer-reviewed journals. I'll be going with that and I'll always be checking on my usual databases like PubMed to triple whammy check that this is an okay journal. Also, I'll be ignoring all of those emails that I get in my spam box forever. Meanwhile, there's this chap, Andy Stapleton. Love your work, peace out. He has exposed fake scientists infiltrating top journals. Now, this is a little bit different. This is where you actually have people who have published a paper 
and they've put a fake name of a fake author of a person who does not even exist on their paper. Why would they do that? And they put them into, some of them, decent journals. Some of them in that top of tier journals. Why would they do that? Because uh, it gives them a little bit of street cred. They're trying to, um, they're trying to preempt the inherent bias of editors and get it out for review. So some editors, like we all are biased, we've all got biases that we need to work on. And unless we have a double blind peer review from the editor's desk forward process in the journals, then we're going to see bias creep in. And um, some people think that having a name of an author from a top reputable institution, supposedly, will get them the street cred that they need to get that paper published. And maybe they're right. This is a problem with the journals. I completely agree with you, Andy. This is a problem with the journals and the journals really need to step up and take this forward and like just, yeah, bite the bullet. I know it's hard and it's not easy to implement new new processes that are going to double blind everything and make it all impossible, but you just got to do it because otherwise we're going to keep seeing this stuff. Also. Nature had a paper that came out, um, when was that? In 2018, thousands of scientists publish a paper every five days. Now, I'm a scientist, a social scientist, and I can't publish a paper every five days. These people said, we searched Scopus for authors who had published more than 72 papers in one calendar year between 20, 2000 and 2016. They figured that many would consider implausibly prolific. We found more than 9,000 individuals. So there's a lot of peeps out there, and they excluded physics, um, but there's a lot of people out there who are publishing, putting their names on papers, and they don't even belong there, um, possibly. And there's also going to be some good people among them that are just, you know, superhero, like mega scholarly brain the size of Texas kind of styles. And how you how you figure out and figure one from the other, I don't know. But there's a lot of things going out there and we're trying to be good people. We're trying to fight the good fight in academia and scholarly activity and scientific merit and move the conversation forward in productive ways so that we can better humanity and um, increase, uh, you know, health outcomes for people, etc. And yeah, there's just a few uh, systems and a few uh, journals and a few people who are not playing the game according to the rules. So you've got to protect yourself. Um, I definitely, how would I protect myself from that? I would make sure that I'm aware of and have spoken to and have worked with the people who are supposedly authors on this paper. And that brings us to the international guidelines. The editors of these top journals got together and put out these four guidelines for um, how you demonstrate whether or not you should be an author on a paper or whether you should just get acknowledged for something awesome that you did, but it didn't really um, warrant authorship. And I definitely recommend checking in against those guidelines regularly. In fact, every time that you're having those conversations around authorship, it's a good idea to refer back to the guidelines and, um, and make sure that hand on your heart you can say, yeah, I've done enough for a mellow puff which is something we say in New Zealand, which references, you know, working hard enough to get that awesome cookie, which is the Mallow Puff. Okay, that's all from me. Peace out.